Welcome back to Austria and our scenic Christmas markets cruise as we glide our way through Europe at what is truly the most magical time of the year. One of the things that I love most about this experience is that you can tailor things to how you feel each day. And right now, I'm up with the sun and I'm about to have a little explore on my own. Anywhere you are, yes, where the party is at. After a couple of days in the Austrian capital of Vienna, we've arrived in one of the country's smallest and most picturesque riverside towns, Dernstein. Good times, new days. Being able to dock right alongside the town means we can easily explore on foot, with its charming cobblestone laneways just steps away. Drink a school me, so... Dürnstein. 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 Yeah, perfect. perfect. Thank you, thank you. These days, it's best known for the blue Baroque tower that has become Dernstein's landmark. So one of the neat things about this are the colours that you see. And the colours in this monastery have a symbolism. The monastery was supposed to be a union between heaven and earth. I so see. grey and yellow on the lower part are the earthly colours. Yellow's ochre, it's a mineral that's in the soil, stands for the earth. Grey stands for the Danube. Blue and white on the tower are the heavenly colours, so like God's fingertip pointing the way to heaven. From a meander through a medieval town to a couple of hours cruising down the Danube, Scenic's Christmas Markets Voyage delivers all the highlights. And milk is no exception. OK, so this morning, we saw that monastery that had been shut down. This is still an active monastery. It's right. Benedictine. You've got 24 monks now. But there's been a community here since 1089. That's crazy. But, I mean, obviously, this building is not 11th century. It was all rebuilt in the Baroque period. So what we'll see today is primarily 18th century. The small town of Melk is best known as home to one of the biggest and most beautiful Baroque buildings in the world, Melk Abbey. Wow. Definitely does not look monastic, I know. But this part of the True. building was never intended for the monks. This was imperial guest rooms. And in fact, only the very rarest of the monks, the abbot and perhaps his second in command, would have ever come in here. So we're here in actually an imperial dining room. So if you look up here, for example, see those oh, wow. open windows? Yes. Back there was the chamber orchestra. And so the way the acoustic in the room went, the sound would circle back down to where they were sitting around this grate. The downstairs was the kitchen. And oh. then you wouldn't see directly down. There'd be a metal plate between it. But that got heated up with all the hot air rising. And they could hold their toes over it and keep them warm in this rather chilly room. From the jaw-dropping exteriors to the detail and opulence of the interiors, a visit to the Abbey is packed with highlights. But the centrepiece of the complex is the church, which truly captures the extravagance of the time. Trinket, this is so wildly ostentatious. It, it is ostentatious, but it, it needs to be. Again, it's that idea of heaven on earth, that God is powerful, heaven is ostentatious and glorious beyond our beliefs. The vivid yellow abbey commands a grand position overlooking the Danube. When you look here, you see, and you look at this gorgeous facade facing what looks like nothing. But in fact, that was the point that at that time, the whole world was coming on the Danube be it trade, be it person transport, and you wanted to present to them the power, the glory of the facade, the church is facing that, showing this power and this glory. Well, it's definitely making a statement. <laughs> that it is, yes. 